So Barry started a chemical reaction just now by taking some iron filings, some iron powder, and placing it into a solution of copper sulfate. He'll be back just now to go over that. I want to have a look at the chemical reaction taking place to identify what type of chemical reaction it is and to see if we can remember about oxidation and reduction, which is really important. So let's go to the chemical reaction. We started with copper sulfate and we added some iron powder, which is iron on its own, and we're not sure exactly what we're going to get. Let's see what is possible. Now, the first thing that we need to recognize is that iron is a reactive metal and copper is less reactive. So it's quite likely that iron will displace copper to form iron to sulfate and copper metal. So let's complete the reaction by saying that we're going to write it like this iron to sulfate plus some copper metal. Now, the next question that we must ask, what type of chemical reaction is this? You know that you can get substitution, addition, elimination, redox, acid and base reactions. So which one is this one? We also know that reactions can be exothermic or endothermic. They can either give out more heat than they have to begin with, or they can absorb heat, which will result in a temperature decrease. We'll need to examine all of those things when we go back and look at the reaction. So for the moment, let's see if this is a redox reaction. The way we're going to do it is by identifying if there's been a change in the oxidation number of each of the components that are here. So let's start. We start by identifying the elements. And you should remember that elements on their own have a total and a unit oxidation number of zero. So I'm going to put a zero above the iron and I'm going to put a zero above the copper. This means that they're in their ground state, their neutral state. They have a total oxidation number of zero. Each of the atoms is not electron rich or electron poor. It is fine as it is. But what about the copper and the sulfate? Let's have a look at the, the reagents here. We know that sulfate has an overall charge of minus 2. And we see that there's sulfate here as well, and it is minus 2. So we're not going to go into detail about that, but it tells us that the total in the compound must be 0. So the copper here must be plus 2, and that must be plus 2. In the same way, the iron must be plus 2 as well. So the unit oxidation number of the iron is plus 2. The unit oxidation number of the copper is plus 2. Now let's see if we can pick up what's happened to each of these. I'm going to use different arrows to pick them up. Copper started at life as plus 2, and look what it's happened to it. It ends life as 0. So it started at plus 2, and it's gone to 0. What's happened? It was electron poor, plus 2. It didn't have enough electrons. It was positively charged. In the process, it has undergone a gain of electrons because it was plus 2. It's now 0. It's gained 2 electrons. What about the iron? Let's have a look at that. Notice the opposite has happened to it. I want to use a different color for this. I'm going to use black. Notice what's happened here. The iron started off as zero and has ended up as plus two. That means that iron has lost two electrons. So we have a loss of two electrons. Now, chemists give some very interesting names for these two processes. When there's a gain of electrons, we say there has been reduction because the number has got uh, more negative. It's gone from plus two to zero. It's been undergone reduction. It's got smaller. From plus 2 to 0 is a smaller change. It's gained negative 2 electrons. So that's why we call the gain of electrons negative. We call that reduction. So I'm going to write that in for us so we've got it clear and we need to remember that this is reduction. Now what about the loss of electrons? Loss of electrons is known as oxidation. So let's make that clear and put it down on our diagram. 
This is oxidation. We need to remember that oxidation is a loss and reduction is a gain. There are a whole lot of ways of remembering that. But one of the ways that I find useful is to say oxidation is a loss. And I just remember these letters. And that spells oil for me. O-I-L. I can also remember the reduction story. Reduction is a gain. So if I take the first letters of, those, of that phrase, reduction, we're obviously talking about electrons as a gain of electrons. So we put that together and we make up the word rig. So an easy way to remember, oil rig, oxidation is a loss, reduction is a gain. When the number gets smaller, more negative, it's reduction because it's gaining electrons. When the number gets bigger, it's losing electrons. It's becoming more positive. I hope you've got that. Now, whenever there is a gain and loss of electrons, we can say there's been a transfer. In this case, the copper ion gained two electrons and the iron, iron atom lost two electrons. The electrons from the iron were transferred to the copper iron. hope that makes sense. So we say there's been a transfer of electrons. So this is clearly a redox reaction. And it's very important that you understand that. It has undergone a process of electron transfer. Now in this case, in the test tube, which we're going to take a look at later, we won't have been able to utilize or use those moving electrons. But there is another system that we can set up where we can actually use these electrons by making an electrochemical cell. And we'll see we've got a question lined up on that, which we'll come to in a few minutes. There's one last thing that I want to just mention as far as this reaction is concerned. And uh, before we take a call with Barry, um, he'll be up just now. Uh, and that's another set of terminology that we just need to be very clear about. Sometimes we refer to things that make oxidation happen. That's the special agent that makes oxidation happen. It's called the oxidizing agent. Now, in this case, we need to be very clear. What is the oxidizing agent and what's the reducing agent? And I want to try and sort this out for you. It's very important that the oxidizing agent and the reducing agent can only be things that are on the reactant side. So in this case, it can only be either the copper 2 plus iron or the iron atom. We have to decide which one is making oxidation happen. So if oxidation is the loss of electrons, what's taking the electrons away? Well, in this case, iron is losing electrons. What's taking the electrons from iron? Well, it must be the copper 2 plus. So we say the oxidizing agent here is copper 2 plus. Oxidizing agent takes electrons. The iron, what does it promote? The iron ion, by taking the electrons, helps the copper 2 plus undergo uh, reduction. So it's the reducing agent. So I want you to see very clearly the oxidizing agent undergoes reduction, whereas the reducing agent, Ra, which I've written there, undergoes oxidation. It might be a little bit confusing to start with, but it's a naming convention that we use in chemistry, and it's very important that you clarify what each of these processes are and what is doing what. So please try and remember that, that you identify what oxidation is, what reduction is, what an oxidizing agent does, and what a reducing agent does. Make sure you can identify them. Yeah, 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 yeah.